Good morning, guys. Okay, got to figure out where the camera is. All right, so I did want to do biscuits this morning to show you guys how I use the rocket stove. But I haven't figured out how to film in there yet. So instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make breakfast and I'm going to make lunch at the same time. And this is how I store my food storage items. You can see this here. So I just kind of wanted to show you how that worked. Good morning, Nancy. So I'm going to make split pea soup and the recipes that I'm taking today are from Living on a Dime, Dining on a Dime, I guess the cookbook is different from the channel. And I do have the link in the description below. So for lunch, we're going to try the solar oven out again and I'm going to do lentil soup. And because it's a dry good, it means that you can store it for a very long period of time and unless you add water, it's going to be as good the, in, in a year as it is today. Things that I like to add to my lentil soup are dehydrated carrots. If you use fresh carrots, the flavor is not going to be the same for whatever reason. Maybe it's more potent. Maybe there's less water in the soup if you do it this way. But I'm going to start out and have my carrots. And then the next thing is my dehydrated onions. Hey, Off Grid. How are you? Hey, the busy little house. Hey, Carlton family. So dehydrated onions, again, the potency level of using dehydrated means that there's less water, more flavor. And then I have my choice, I don't know, maybe I should turn it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Hold on a second, I'll turn it. Can you still see it? There we go. All right, so you can see it there. So I have some orange lentils and I have some green lentils and I'm just going to do the orange lentils today. If you have some kind of uh, meat that you want to put into it, that's great. I don't put meat into it. What I do instead, let's see, What I do instead is instead of meat, I just put in a lot of butter. So the size of my pan, this is the pan that actually goes with the sun oven. It's not huge, but if you're only feeding three people for one meal, it's plenty big. And I hope maybe I need to back up a bit so you can see. Good morning, Darlene. Uh, yes, Off Grid said that the tiny house is pretty and functional. We're working on it. Last year, Instagram worthy was what I was working on. And uh, we painted the floors and I put up some different curtains and a lot of the difference this year is just my camera that I'm using that I finally figured out how to use it. <laughs> so um, I find that if I don't put a cube of butter into my split pea soup that the flavor is not as good and people don't want to eat it as much and then it doesn't last us as long. I believe very strongly in good fat. My mom when I was a kid she would skimp on everything except the fat that we were eating. We always ate real butter and we always had it on hand. We, there was never a shortage of butter. And I do the same thing and you can look at my kids. My kids are not obese. I'm a chubby mom, but I'm not obese. And we eat a lot of butter. So, all right, so this is the water from the hand pump. We use the gallon jars from drinking water and my blush is a little bit wonky, isn't it? Hey Rocky Brook, hey Layla, and um, it's hard to show this up here. Let's see, I'll try and show you again, and I need to move my washing water. So as you can see, there's my washing water ready to go for the day, so I'm going to move those out of the way. In a minute. So there is my pot, and what I do is really really technical. That's how much I put in a carrots. That's how much I put in of onions. And then I'm going to put in all, almost a quart, of the lentils. And 
And then, I'm going to put in some salt. And the reason that I think the cookbook is nice is because you have options. You can kind of see her basic recipe. But you have options. You can simple it up. You can take it down a notch. But that one, the recipe that she makes is on 108. And you can see the next one down is like turkey soup. It's very basic. Turkey bones, water, salt, garlic, onion, and pepper. So how to make your own uh, soup stock. And the reason that I don't necessarily... This is the cookbook that my mom would have written if she had written a, a cookbook. So I already know how to make this stuff. But for those of you who don't know how to cook out of your uh, food storage, it's a good book. All right. And the nice thing is it supports our channel as well when you purchase. So I'm going to fill this up and just pour in water until I feel like it's a good spot. And then I put the lid on and it is ready to go. So there's dinner, and as soon as it gets bright enough that I can go put it out in the solar cooker, I'll go put it out in the solar cooker. So there's lunch. And now, again, sometimes it's not a good thing that I'm cocky about being off-grid and minimalist at the same time because there's actually more space in here for things than, than what I keep because I don't like to have to work around clutter and so sometimes I find myself looking around thinking I don't have another bowl so I'm going to use this pot and what I used it for last night was to steam asparagus so I'm not even gonna wash it it's perfectly fine um let's see all right Here's my chia seeds. And with chia seeds, let's see, what else do I need? All right, so I have hemp hearts and I have flax meal. <clears throat> And I just once again kind of eyeball it. So I'll try and show it to you again. The pot is a little bit wet. All right, so need a spoon. And these swell up quite a bit, but so does oatmeal. And once you kind of figure out what consistency you like, it's really straightforward. And that should be probably enough for the three of us. When we're off grid, we really have to be careful to get enough calories. If you don't, you're gonna get sick. And it's important in the morning to have something warm to eat. So we use the chia seeds in lieu of oatmeal. And there's the flax meal. I also use the flax as the um, kind of like sesame seeds on the hamburger buns we make. And then there's the hemp hearts. And I don't necessarily think that any of this stuff is essential, but I feel like when I add it and we have just a little bit of a variety in texture, it makes us feel more satiated. So it's more of a mouth thing than a calorie thing. We could put in dates. But probably what I'll do is chop up dates for yours because I don't want the dates. All right, so. Well, we do have chopped dates, don't we? Yeah. All right, so I boiled the water on the stove. And I'm just going to pour it in there and then stir it a little bit, make sure that all of everything actually got wet. And you see how quickly it um, starts to thicken? So we do this the same way that we do, let's see if I can find it. She does have a recipe in here for oatmeal, but it's... Um, 
It's pretty much just saying add water until you like the texture and then add dates or add apples or add something else. So I'm just going to watch and I see that it's thick enough again. And the nice thing about this uh, breakfast food is that um, it will help you have regular bowels. And even if you're on keto, you can eat the chia. And thus the hemp and the flax, too. What are you doing, kiddo? So you see, I'm not really cooking it. I'm just kind of watching the texture and adding a little more water to let everything expand. All right, let's pull you back up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stir this again until I feel like it has the water in it it needs to be able to hydrate. There we go. And then I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit. All right. So again, food storage cookbook. We really like it ourselves. My favorite thing that my mom didn't teach me how to make is their salad dressing. But they also have, I have some, uh, they have some biscuit recipes in here that I altered to be paleo. I took their drop biscuits and turned them into a paleo recipe. And then I took their baking powder biscuits and turned them into uh, something that makes a really good crust for chicken pot pie. And I use a lot of bean flour for that. Um, all right. Hello, buddy going RV. Um, <laughs> off grid lifestyle said off grid gym membership canceled. So true. All right. Nancy said, when you dehydrated the carrots, how do you cut them? Coins or cubes? If you're going to dehydrate carrots, do it whatever size you want, but make sure that, especially if you're doing outdoor type um, dehydrating that doesn't have heat applied, get it as fine as you can, like maybe even grate it. It's tiny. The bigger the piece of carrot is, the harder it is to get it to dry thoroughly. And then even if it seems dry, sometimes there's a little moisture left over. And when you put it in the jar, it can... Um, leak that moisture out and then you have a mold problem. So if you're going to dehydrate it outside in open air, I would grate it. I would grate your carrots and then lay it out in a layer. Um, if you're going to do it inside, the thinner you slice it, the better. Or chop it, but honestly I would say just grate it. Um, with your onions, it kind of goes the same way. The finer you can get it without turning it into mush, the better. But you can also just put it in your blender with a little bit of water and make it into um, kind of like a paste, kind of like a fruit leather, and dry it like that, and then um, and then you can just break it off in pieces, and it'll when you when you rehydrate it, it'll just turn into like a slurry. Um, but just yeah, the finer you can get it, the better. If you're off grid, obviously you're not going to have a blender, but a, a grater. Let's see if I can find my grater so that I can explain what I mean. Just a treat, a cheese grater works really well. Sorry, I do have an eyelash in my eyeball. So, drops. Hmm? did you want bag drops? No, but thank you. Go ahead and finish getting ready and hang up your bathroom. Okay. So eventually I do want to show you how the Aircrete oven works and show it to you live, but, um, it just wasn't ready this morning and I need to get breakfast down people. Any other questions before I head out? I think that's all I have. And I'm still working on that uh, sheep wagon. Um, I'm still working on that sheep wagon video. Last night my my computer wasn't working correctly even though I'd sat down to do it. Let's see, what else do we have? I do have the garden started. Um, and so that will be coming up next. We've been milking the goats. And... Last night on Facebook Live, I did do a very short video talking about garden seeds. Where's my camera? I keep forgetting. Um, Nancy said, never thought of dehydrating carrots, even though I use vegetable flakes all the time, LOL. And sometimes it's just one of those things where unless you've seen somebody else do it, you don't realize that you could or should. Um, Off Good Lifestyle said, pizza on the oven. I should do pizza and, and show you. We have done pizza in that oven, and we do have a paleo pizza dough that is very good and cookies.
We should try cookies. I haven't made cookies in a while because we went paleo. Now, or we went keto. So I still make that kind of thing for the girls, but I don't make it as much for myself. But what else do we have? Lots of cleanup. Uh, still trying to get things minimized in the house without getting rid of throwing the baby out with the bath water type stuff. Speaking of which, this these stairs that you see, they are made out of um, secondhand lumber as well as lumber that we milled up at Essential Mountain Homestead. And um, Swamp Creek Homestead is who came and made these stairs for us. And I, I do think that they are the the centerpiece, the most beautiful part of our home. So go check out their channel, Swamp Creek Homestead. The Never Finished Ranch, <laughs> that sounds familiar. The Never Finished Homestead, <laughs> the Never Finished Ranch. I am new to your channel. Do y'all travel for work or why are you always moving every six? So uh, for the last two and a half years, John has been in school in Tulsa. And so I, want to be here in Idaho in the summer to take care of all my fruit trees. So we own property in, in Idaho. Our homestead is in Idaho. And we had renters that kind of knew how to take care of it, but not really. So I come home and I spend the six months here to take care of our orchards and our animals when they're giving birth and that kind of thing. And before two and a half years ago, before we started doing, before John went to school, uh, John had hurt his back and he was a FedEx courier. He hurt his back. And I already had a YouTube channel and we decided to take our channel on the road and get to Florida. And along the way, we took a lot of really great videos of homesteads and tiny houses and interesting architecture that had to do with self-reliance and being debt free. So we traveled for about eight months, maybe, maybe a year, um, down to Florida and then back again, taking all these videos. Before that, we were just here on the homestead. So we left here 2016 to go on our little road trip. Before that, we had the homestead and I was just homesteading and filming that. So it's the original homestead, but when John hurt his back, we traveled for a year and then we he set up in Tulsa and we are with him in the winter and then we're here in the summer. I would like to stop doing that because it's hard on us and it's hard on the homestead and it's hard on the channel when I, when I go back and forth like that. Um, Busy little house said, have a great day. Thank you. Hey, Keeping a Dutch. And Keeping a Dutch is back in our neck of the woods back in Tulsa. He has a great channel too. So if you want to see how to homestead in the south, south, midwest, south, south, uh, south no, the mid, the central, central U.S., a little bit south of central U.S. Um, okay, Ashy said, what happened to the house? Are you going to get it? It still is up in issues with the title so we don't know there they still don't have a clear title on it and so even though we have money down on it and we're, and we're waiting for it we don't know if we'll get it um keeping in touch no more road trips never ever ever again no more road trips I'm so done with traveling the never finished ranch said that's awesome well we like it and this is the this is the cabin that we built out here on our property while we still had renters in the house because we knew we'd be back and forth and I love being off grid and I always wanted to live in a tiny house. So this is what we did. And we did it very inexpensively. The shed itself cost us 7,000. And then um, it's cost us a couple hundred dollars here and there because a lot of what we did was barter we in order to, in order, what? We get three three right. So I've spent a couple more hundred dollars, but most of what we've done to fix the inside of the cabin was using what we already had or bartering. And so that's how we finished it up and we love it. And we have a lot of other collaborations that we've been doing with other channels along the way, showcasing their skills like the Honeydew Carpenter. Um, All right. Okay, you need to stop talking though because it's a live show, okay? All right. Ellie said, I really admire you. I've been subscribed for a long time now and I really like these live streams you've been doing. Well, to tell you the honest truth, it's about the only way I seem to be able to get a video up that I feel is educational is in the morning if I can show you what I'm cooking the rest of the day I'm taking little bit, bits of videos here and there, but what I'm having a hard time finding time to do is sit down and edit. I try, and then if my computer acts up at all, I can't get it done and also get lunch done and go milk goats and stuff like that. So this is my best shot. The Never Finished Rant said, I'm wanting to start a YouTube channel, but I don't like to film myself. I think I will just film my animals and chores. Well, that is something that's kind of interesting. Some people can get away with not filming themselves. 
Um, there's a lot of channels that we've helped along the way and that's the biggest thing that people have to get over is you need to have that camera in close and personal. You have to be able to talk to it and uh, it's all well and good to take videos of what's happening on the outside but um, people people really relate to eyeball contact, you know what I mean? Um, buddy going RVing said, what's this Dutch you come over here to cause trouble? Uh, oh, uh, Dutch and I have known each other for a really long time. Dutch was one of our um, stops, one of our first stops actually on our way to Florida. And we went and saw him in his pole barn before he started to build his house and he's actually really close out to the area that we wanted to buy this house in so we would be neighbors we would be within like 12 or 15 minutes of each other so yeah dutch has been on the channel for a really long time and he his his video of of his pole barn is actually one of my bigger videos at the beginning of our trip off good lifestyle said can you give us another walk around on the tiny house and outside around the property please i will do my best our our daylight our sunlight our filmable spaces right now are it's tricky um, after winter, I mean anybody who lives in a windy state knows that after winter you've got a lot of garbage to pick up and the renters have been here. So there's a lot of tidying up I'd like to do before I show you too much. It took us a couple days to get the cabin put back together and I think it's going to take us a solid week to get things put together on the property so that I want to show it to you. Um, snow is hard on things, wind is hard on things and I want it to be pretty before I show you. And I will show you in here too. It's tricky to show in the tiny cabin though because it's hard to actually see everything at once <laughs> because it's so tiny and the camera doesn't do a good job showing it. So I'll, I can probably show it to you in bits as I switch and I'll try and do a video showing you uh, in bits what it looks like because the light as it changes in the cabin as I'm turning it makes it really hard to see it. Um, and then yes, I will show you the outside of the property. Once I've done a little bit more of a walkthrough and cleaned up garbage, I will definitely show that to you. How long will you be here? This time, I don't know. The renters are not out of the house until the end of the month. And so I'm just focusing on the outside to get that ready. And then depending on what we try to do, I'm, I'm thinking about putting the cabin up for Airbnb and, and also the house and see what happens. If it does well on Airbnb, probably we won't sell it. We would find a renter who wants to come into the big house and who would be willing to manage the Airbnb for, um, you know, for and, and get paid a cleaning fee to, to keep everything up and looking nice and allow them to use the homestead as they want to with the fruit and with the animals and everything. So if the Airbnb did well and it was bringing in a pretty good income, we would bring renters in who were able to, to keep it up. And then I would go back to Tulsa. Uh, if the, if I put it on Airbnb and it doesn't do well, then most likely what we'll do is indeed sell it. Unless, miraculously, if while I'm here, if the YouTube channel picks back up to what it was before we started moving, then we would have to have another discussion with John about where we're staying. So, oh, let's see. Hindustan Rock and Science. Interesting. Keeping a Dutch said, yeah, that's a long time ago. It was. It was a long time ago. It was over two and a half years ago. Was it two and a half years ago? Yeah. I think it was two years ago. Um, the Never Finished Rant said, so you're moving into a full-size house and out of the tiny house soon. Where are you going to move? So uh, we live here in the tiny house in the summer. If our renters move out, what, what's happening is my husband has asked us to sell the property. He doesn't want to have property across the Great Divide. <laughs> and so um, if, if we can make the property pay for itself in a big way, then we'll keep it. If, however, it's requiring me to come back and forth every year, it needs to be sold because it's not making enough money as, as just a rental property to make it worth that trip. So if I can figure out how to get the Airbnb thing to work, then that would be great. But John is in Tulsa. He's trying to purchase a homestead in Tulsa right now, but it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, keeping a Dutch said, are those spices on the wall behind? Yes. Um, these are all my dry powdered spices.
and it works really well. I had to go on YouTube to figure out how to make those braces. <laughs> well, those funny things you didn't realize you didn't know how to do. Ashley said, how much are you going to rent the house for? I don't know. Uh, here, generally, if you're out in the country and it has some acreage with it, and this one also has the greenhouse and the pastures and the fences and the chicken coops and things set up. Out here, generally, something that size uh, goes for about $1,400 a month. But we haven't been charging our renters that by a long shot because they've done a really good job taking care of things. They've been very responsible, and we felt like it was worth it to us to, to have them uh, pay less and have them stay. Uh, I, I think if John wanted to rent it again, though, he'd have it pretty close to that 1400 which is why if we did the Airbnb and we let the renters be the property managers for that, they could make quite a bit of money from managing the Airbnbs. So, Hey, Mandolin, how are you? Rocky Brook is here. Biddy Boo Brown is here. Let's see. Off grid said, don't sell the tiny house, keep for one of your daughters. Well, if we settle back in Tulsa, the hard thing is I cannot move my tiny house. It's a 12 by 32. I cannot move it to Tulsa for what I have into it. We have finished it. We do love it. If, if my dream was to come true, I would have it um, Airbnb and then use it when I don't have people in, in Airbnb. But you don't always get what you want. And it's more important for our family to be together all in one spot. So if, I would probably sell the tiny cabin separate, separate from the house. And um, it's all just a little bit convoluted because it is convoluted. It sounds convoluted because it is convoluted. We're trying to figure it out. And, and it's because the renters are still there and we don't have everything finished to fix up the house that I just, I don't have a straight answer, I'm afraid. Let's see. Do I have a cookbook? I don't have a cookbook, but my friend does. I have it down in the link in the description below. And this is the one I use. If you're doing food storage or really frugal cooking, dining on a dime. And I do have it in the link in the description. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think that's all the questions that I see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the live stream. Betty Boo said, was the house in good shape still? Yes, there's a couple spots where we had some water leakage because of the amount of snow we had. So we have some repair to do on the inside and some walls. But um, we have a good quote on that. Everything else is pretty much just surface cleanup, garbage. Mostly it's just garbage cleanup from the wind in the winter. Kai wants to show you her tooth that is gone. I just lost my tooth last night. She did. Come see. Now I have four front teeth like a horse. Yep, there you go. All right, how are the girls settling in? I think that when I warned them before we got here that it was going to be lots and lots and lots of chores in exchange for being able to come, I don't think they remembered what it's like to haul water. So they're the ones that do the, the pump for the water. They haul my water. And when ever they're awake, they're working. And I'm in here cooking sporadically, and then I go out and I help them work. And it is farm kid life. So I, I'm not sure. I They still love being here, but I do think they're slightly dismayed at the amount of work that we're doing. Uh, yeah, so Kai, my little monkey who lost her teeth last night. So I'm going to show you really quick what this turned into. Do you see how it just sat for about five minutes? And you see how thick it is now. We like to put um, cream on it just to give us more calories for the day. Or milk. Well, not very often we don't use milk. Usually Dad use, uses milk. We do have the goat's milk that we can use on it. But pretty much that's it. And we are good to go. And if you guys are enjoying this, I will probably keep doing it until I can kind of get my feet under me on the editing stuff. Uh... Keeping a Dutch said, I want well like that on a pump. How deep is your well? Because I know the one, our pump can go down 300 feet. Uh, but our well itself is only 80 feet. So it works pretty well. And I think it costs us $275, maybe $300 to put that pump on the well. And it works very, very well. All right.
Yeah, idle hands get into trouble more. Yes. Okay. Okay, so everybody's kind of liking the live stream. So I will try to keep doing this, and hopefully you can be patient with me as I'm trying to get some of the edited videos done with the stove and with the garden. Um, there just aren't enough hours in my day. We're getting up at about 6, 6.30, and then we're going to bed about 7.30. And this year we have found we're not using the, the candles as much. Instead of staying up and reading or working, we are just going to bed with the sun. We're getting up with the sun, we're going to bed with the sun. So I have less expense because I'm not buying lamp oil and I'm not buying candles. And I feel like we're more rested, which, you know, circadian rhythms are important. Oh, Keeping in touch that he's on county water. I would love to have a well. Well, in some of the places we looked at did have wells. And... Um, that was a strong attraction to us for some of those places that we looked at. But in the end, it seems like, see here in the country, you're not on city water. Everybody has their own well. Um, but we have a different water system altogether and we have recharge from the canal. So, it, you know, different system. <laughs> the Never Finish Rant says, yes, I enjoy watching every morning while I'm milking. Well, I, that would be a trick. If I tried to take the camera out while I was milking the baby, there's one baby this year left that hasn't been sold, the little doling. And if I tried to take the tripod out with me so that I could do a live while I was milking, she would knock it over. But I could try. Maybe a GoPro would work. Biddy Boo said, I started to call you the other night. Now glad I didn't, I would have woke you. Yeah, we're, we're in bed with the sun. Mandolin said, we want a well, but we're in the city. Well, it is, a, it, we really enjoy having a well. We enjoy having a well. The thing is, for this property, I have set it up exactly how I want it. And that is kind of the, the knife in the heart for me, is that we have everything set up. We have enough land to do what we want to, but not too much. We have the greenhouse. We have the garden beds. We have the orchard. We have the firewood from the old trees on our property. And um, three wood stoves now, I think, between the tiny house and the big house. Well, actually, I guess my other wood stove is here. This is the big stove that goes in the big house. So to me, it took a lot of years to put this together. Not all of it was expensive, but some of it was. A lot of it was just sweat equity, like the greenhouse. I paid for the greenhouse with a Kickstarter, and it took me a long time to get all the projects done that I did for that greenhouse. We have the well pump so that we can live off grid as long as we want to. Um, and so I do struggle with leaving it, uh, just because it works. We've, we've proven that it works, whether you're on grid or off grid, the system we've set up really works. Hey, the Geo Scholar. Rocky Rook Brook said, we've been collecting rainwater in the garden. Good job. The Geo Scholar said he's at work. Ah, I'm sorry, distracting you. The Geo Scholar said, I once washed my clothes with rain rainwater. Today, we actually do need to do laundry. If we were to take our laundry into the laundromat, it would be one load at this point. But instead, what we're gonna do is do one load. We have enough clothes for wearing one set and washing one set and one pair of pajamas so the pajamas don't get washed until they're actually quite dirty but we can change our pants once we can change our shirts once and then we have quite a, a good supply of underwear and socks and so today i'll probably do laundry i don't know if i will get it on a live stream or not i wish i could sometime but uh the mornings here in the 40s and 50s almost through the whole year it doesn't really warm up that much in the morning so it's hard to get out for a live show in the mornings to do laundry because it's too cold. So anyway, I'm gonna go. Make sure to share this. Make sure to go over to our Instagram, our Facebook. If you want other kinds of content, it's just Dirt Patch Heaven. And if you are interested in our products, they're on Etsy. It's um, etsy.com and it's Dirt Patch Heaven that you would look up. And um, do you love Idaho? We're so glad to be here. Off Grid said, compared to the other tiny houses you visited while traveling to the tiny house, your tiny is five-star tiny house. Well, it's probably because we actually live in it. I mean, that's the thing is that we've been in this for three summers now, this tiny house. This is our third summer. Is it our third summer? Uh, I thought this or was more. our fourth. Maybe it's our fourth. It's at least our third. And when you live in it, you get those tiny details down because it is important to be comfortable. Safety is an issue. You, you, work, you have to work and, and get those tiny details down. And while other tiny houses are interesting to stay in for a night, they have a tendency not to be super comfortable for more than a night. 
and and if you're going to be here for for that long you figure out your details all right <laughs> mandolin said at least mosquitoes aren't tackling you right out the door i swear they're stalking me yeah for us it was like midges where we were in tulsa all right missy you need to go get your shirt on from yesterday you're not going to put on new clothes these are all clothes and my shirt all right, I better go get the troops and uh, all lined out and get breakfast in their bellies. And please make sure to share this. Let people know about it. Just because if if we can get the channel to be back up to the level it was before, it makes a difference in whether or not John feels like it's worth keeping the property. Uh, and uh, that would that would be what I would, in the end, really hope would happen. And we will talk to you later.